Good morning. I'm Archdeacon Wilma Woods at St. Giles Anglican, and welcome to our service of the Word for this Sunday, the fourth Sunday in Easter Tide. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together in this way on the Lord's Day to praise you for our, your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few announcements, three. This is birthday Sunday here at St. Giles. So happy birthday to all who celebrated a birthday in April. And I'm sorry, but your cupcake is just going to have to be postponed for a bit, but we will pray for you. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor we pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The next announcement is about Bible and Brew. Bible and Brew is now being done online with Zoom. And if you would like to be with us as we study together, you are most welcome. Please send your, invitation, your email to me for an invitation. And you can send that to my email or to the church's email, which you can find on the website. And send me your information so that I can email you an invitation. Now about the service today, uh, it's a service of the word. 
The responses will be found on the screen, but you could also download this service in print, except for the sermon part. I will be leaving spaces of silence during the prayers so that you can add your own petitions. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We pray, O God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, Make us perfect in every good work to do your will, and work in us that which is ple well pleasing in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day they spent much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. my shepherd He leads me with nothing to want And He leads me along With His staff and His rod He is here to comfort my fears the valley I walk with his hand in mine I thought I passed my last breath in the shadows of death but I'm still here safe on the other side The shepherd of life There's a table laid out before me There's a cup in which joy overflows And leads me back here 
beside Cool in the grasses I lie Here with my Lord Here with my Lord Who gently restores The shepherd of life A reading from the first letter of Peter. For it is to your credit, if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, where is the credit in that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins, he might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a sheep thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This Sunday, the fourth and Easter tide, is also known as Good Shepherd Sunday. No surprise there, considering the readings appointed. The text from Acts, however, is about the beginnings of the church, the community of people who came together at Pentecost and after. As we know, the church is not the building, but the body of Christ. And this has especially been reinforced during this last six weeks when this actual building is closed except for the brief time of taping services during the week preceding the Sunday. Then, as now, was a time of disruption, a time when things were rapidly changing for a community of believers. The people forming this new community, this church, were people from all nations, cultures, races, and languages, an inclusive community finding their way in a new paradigm. How did they do this? Here we are as a church finding our way in a new paradigm, forced on us by a pandemic in a time when we cannot be church as we have always been. And nope, we've always done it that way, isn't going to work now. So what can we learn or relearn? How can we still be church? It says, in verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. We might remember this from our own baptismal vows. 
They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship. The apostles were taught by Jesus and he taught them about himself as well as from the law and the prophets. The apostles' teachings now form the authoritative word of the New Testament on which we rely as well as the Old Testament to remind us of who God is, who Jesus Christ is, what he did, why, and what it means for us and our lives. Father Dean Pinter writes this in his commentary on Acts. Too often, it seems that contemporary Christians try to find a verse or two that will help guide them through the day. What is needed is regular and comprehensive immersion in large chunks of biblical text that allows us to be drawn into the broad biblical story. I agree. The pieces of scripture that we hear read and hear preached on Sunday by Sunday is only a start. It's only the beginning. We really do not get enough of the story unless we read what comes in the chapters before and after, and indeed the entire gospel book or epistle. This is why Bible studies are such a good thing. Not only do you spend time with the apostles' teachings, but it is also a time of fellowship with others. People of the church spend time together, fellowship. They spend time at church gatherings, at meals and studies and other events. People of the church come together, not always just on a Sunday, but in all days. They come together to praise and to work, play and study, sing, and a multitude of other things. And yes, I know, not right now. Yet we do come together still through online services, online studies, phone calls, emails, delivery, of grocery hampers, giving to the Easter appeal. We still manage to come together in diverse ways. Maybe not as we would like to, but we do come together. Last Wednesday, Bible and Brew met via Zoom. It was wonderful to see and to hear from everyone. It was the same, but different and new. Still a study, still together in fellowship in a new way. And I doubt that Luke could have even imagined what devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship would look like today. Yet, here we are. The people in Acts also devoted themselves to the breaking of bread and the prayers. The breaking of bread in the Eucharist is now on pause. And we know that when this is over, we will again gather around this altar to break bread. Until then, we have a Eucharistic fast. Perhaps breaking bread together can also mean a sharing of bread, of food with others in a different way. It is not the same, but feeding others by supporting the food bank, warm welcome kitchen or hamper programs, sharing of our food may be a way to break bread with others in this time when many are without jobs and do not have enough food for themselves or their family. I think that most all of us have added time and length to our prayers in the last weeks. I tend to think there are more intercessory type prayers, asking, requesting, and thanks and praise. And that would be natural in a time of crisis when needs for peace, health, and healing are great. And yet even, and maybe especially in time of crisis, God remains good, loving, and faithful to us. So often, we hear how it used to be in the good old days in the church. These verses from Acts tell us how it was in the real good old days of the early church. These were a people who were moving from something they knew, a way of life that was familiar and secure, into something new and perhaps risky. Some of these people were the 3,000 who had just been baptized, and they formed a church that was generous, sharing, sharing what they had when they saw need. They were loving and inclusive, no matter nationality, culture, race, or language, and deeply devoted people to gathering around the apostles' teachings and in prayer. Other people saw this, and the church grew by huge numbers. I think we can learn from this. After this is over, I do not think that the church will be the same as it was. And I don't think that we as humans who have experienced a worldwide pandemic will be the same people. But what will be the same is that the God of the first church formed at Pentecost will be the same, loving and faithful, merciful and full of grace. God for us yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen.
And now let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for all those who are alone. For this community, for our country of Canada, and for the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, remembering especially those in the RCAF who died in the helicopter accident last week. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, remembering especially those who suffer in this time of social distancing and isolation, in abusive situations. For all those who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick and the friendless and the needy, remembering especially those in the healthcare professions. For the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Robert, our bishop, and for all bishops, clergy, and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For our own needs and those of others. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for those who have died in the peace of Christ, and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Gracious God, you have heard the prayers of your faithful people. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Grant our requests as may be best for us. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is the time of the offertory. And during this time of pandemic, when we cannot physically put our offerings on the plate, we ask that offerings continue to be given by mail, e-transfer, or pre-authorized deposits through your bank. The information is on our website. And we pray, Lord, your Lord is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we say, glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep who has opened for you the gate of glory, give you life in all its fullness and lead you to life eternal. And the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. 
Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see you next Sunday.